Hello, uh, this is Dr. Matthew Brothers here with Dr. Tony Raviel from Emory University, Pediatric Cardiology. Our lesson today is how to place a uh, femoral CVL in an infant. Uh, Dr. Raviel, can you tell me why a femoral CVL is important? Knowing how to do this is important. Well, for any child who is critically ill, uh, access is very important for both medications, for uh, monitoring their uh, venous uh, pressures, and for drawing labs. Uh, in some children, the central venous line, femoral or subclavian, is the only line possible. Uh, many children are unable to have pick lines or other uh, central lines placed for various reasons. Very good. So uh, knowing the anatomy, I imagine, is important in this procedure. Can you tell me about the anatomy of the venous blood vessels? Well, the reason for using uh, the femoral vein is because it's fairly large. It's uh, actually a little larger than the subclavian vein. Uh, it's far enough away from the baby's face that they don't get anxious or excited about putting it in, especially if you're not being able to use a lot of sedation. The uh, vein, artery, and nerve are, have a very uh, clear um, association with each other. Uh, obviously, on one side it's in that direction, and the other side it's the other direction. And it's fairly low risk to do a femoral venous line. It's pretty obvious when you hit the artery that you fit the artery. Uh, there aren't very many other uh, vessels or uh, structures that are uh, threatened by entry with a needle. Uh, and uh, as I said, the vessel is fairly large and re relatively easy to access. Very good. So there's special equipment you use to put in femoral CVLs, correct? Right. There are um, many kits that can be used. We, in this institute, use the Cook uh, brand of kits. Uh, they come in multiple sizes. The usual one would be to use in an infant would be either a 4 French or a 5 French kit. They come in lengths anywhere from 5 to 12 uh, centimeters, but the 5 or 8 centimeter would be the more likely to use in a newborn. Um, there are uh, multiple um, pieces of equipment within the kit. Uh, obviously, additional uh, pieces of uh, equipment are necessary to hook up to our uh, central venous systems. Um, there is a, a needle provided in the kit, but sometimes uh, you might choose to use a different needle. Uh, in that situation, you might need a different guide wire to uh, aid in the uh, access of the vessel. Excellent. So, Dr. Rowe, you're, fav uh, you're famous in this institution for your ability to place these lines. Can you tell me a little bit about your technique? Well, the technique, I think, is, is the most important. Uh, and actually, I, I've coined the phrase, it's nine-tenths positioning and one-tenth positioning for a very specific reason. I think if you uh, have a reasonably sedated patient, and again, using the femoral area, the child does not have to be comatose or, or paralyzed. Uh, just mild sedation is enough, but I think positioning the, the groin with a, a roll under the bottom uh, with the hip being the highest point uh, of the uh, child is important. I usually use some sort of a small board, like even a resuscitation board, to tape their knees down to allow that position to be uh, attained. And again, uh, if you have the proper positioning, uh, you've done 90% of the job. The technique for entering the vessel is called the Seldinger technique. Uh, there is a, um, a variation with how low below the ligament uh, people uh, enter the vessel. Uh, I like to go fairly low below the, vest below the ligament so that the angle of the needle entry through the skin is not very acute, so it's actually rather shallow, and that gives you a better chance of hitting the vessel uh, with the needle that's being used. Wonderful. So then once you have the line in place, how can you tell us in the correct place? What ways do you use to check the placement of the central venous line? Well, the first hint you get is when you enter the vessel itself, if, the, uh, if you get arterial blood or, or pulsatile blood, then you've hit the artery. Uh, in many children who are cyanotic, uh, that, that blood may be blue, and so the color won't tell you very much, but the force with which it's coming out would, would tell you. The other thing would be uh, the ease with which the guide wire passes. And um, third, how well the blood draws back through either your needle, the, the catheter, uh, and into the system. Some people talk about using x-rays. Is that necessary to confirm? In the femoral area, if the wire course was uh, rather easy and if the blood flow back and forth through the uh, different lumen of the catheters are uh, easy, then no x-ray is necessary in general. If there was some concern about the entry, then of course an x-ray would be the next thing to do. Very good. Thank you, Dr. Raviel, for talking with us today. Uh, we've learned how to place a central venous line in an infant. 
And uh, please refer to our library for more information about pediatric cardiology here at Emory University.